Hi guys, welcome to the 2015 uh, Subaru WRX STI. Uh, this is the MY16 version. Um, it's been lightly updated by Subaru. In Australia, it retains the 2.5 litre turbocharged boxer engine, producing 221 kilowatts and 393 newton meters. This engine is perhaps going to appeal to the uh, older school WRX fans as it produces that throbbing um, boxer soundtrack as opposed to the new WRX engine which is a bit more refined and it sort of loses that that throbbing characteristic. As you can see it still stands out as a, a muscly rally bred sedan. It's got the big wing on the back um, it looks like it's been aerodynamically shaped like a like a racing car and a um, diffuser underneath to help extract the air from underneath the car. There's also a set of lightweight forged 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped in Dunlop Sportmax tyres and some STI twin piston front brakes behind there. The front end is perhaps a bit friendlier compared with the, uh, the previous generations but at the same time it looks a bit more premium I think. Still got that uh, trademark bonnet scoop feeding air into the intercooler, the top mounted intercooler. I'll start it up and you can have a bit of a listen to it. Push button start. So you can definitely hear that throbbing soundtrack from the engine. It is a bit quiet for my liking, particularly on the outside. Um, a lot of new cars, are, you know, they've got to meet very strict emissions laws so the exhausts are becoming quieter and quieter in my opinion um, inside the cabin it does you do get that sort of um, that characteristic WRX sound but from the outside it's, uh, it's it's pretty quiet as you can see the WRX has become quite a premium model like it's got this fake carbon fiber but apart from that um, very sophisticated dash um, even the instrument cluster is quite sophisticated a lot of technology in there but who knew a WRX STI would come with apps? Um, but you've got Pier, uh, Pandora and Miralink. Um, you can change various settings. Sat nav. And then up the top you've got this separate screen, which uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. But you can see things such as the boost gauge, um, general clock and information, uh, fuel economy, your, your, your fuel economy progress, uh, your torque distribution, and then this, which is a bit confusing, it's got your percentage of your accelerator throttle on your right, and then you've got your live uh, liters per hundred, and then your liters per hundred for since you've refilled it, I think. And then up the top is your your liters per hundred uh, on the trip computer A. So it's a little bit confusing, um, but I'm sure once you have the car, if you own the car for a few weeks, you'd get used to knowing where everything is, like the time, for instance. You've got to look for it. Um, there's a lot of digital displays everywhere you've actually got to look around for what you want and down the bottom here we've got the uh, drive mode selector so we've got you've got an intelligent mode and it comes up on the on the instrument cluster with a little move the steering wheel up for you, a little uh, graph that shows you sort of the torque curve I suppose or the engine mapping and you've got sport and then sport sharp um, and also you've got the center differential um, you can put it in auto mode and it just selects as you go um, or you've got manual mode and it goes all the way rear biased it's not completely rear wheel drive it's just biased to the rear and you can move it up to the front for a complete 50% uh, locking you know front to rear distribution 50 50 this sort of setting is really only suitable for the for the dirt I think um, We've taken it on the track, I'll show you the uh, the hot lap in a moment. Um, it, it becomes locked, so the front wheels can't spin any faster than the rear. And sometimes when you're going around corners, um, for it to be smooth, you, the, the front wheels sometimes do spin a bit faster or a bit slower than the rear. So, yeah, for everyday conditions, it's, uh, it's probably not suitable. This one comes with a sunroof and you've got some sporty seats. The seats aren't as, as hugging as they used to be. I remember the uh, previous model WRX STIs had really aggressive chunky seats these 
the side bolsters are alright, um, but when you go around the track, it's you, you do you can fall out of them pretty easily. Um, but they they are comfortable. They're they're very comfortable. You you could go for a long drive and not um, you know get a bad back or anything like that. We'll check out the back seat. So in the back, you've got a bit of room here. Um, you could easily get uh, two adults here and go for a, a nice weekend away. Uh, headroom is is not bad. This one, even with the sunroof, they've managed to, to make a big cutout or they've, they've stopped the sunroof from coming too far back. So my head doesn't actually touch the roof at all, but if you're a bit taller, you might. But um, it's, it's impressive. For, for a dedicated sports sedan, um, it's, it's impressive amount of room. Feels pretty high quality too. It's got soft leather. Um, perforated just a bit of breathability two cup holders but yeah it feels like a nice place you could use this car as an everyday car definitely uh, there's no sort of you know sacrifice you have to make is that going to upset the fans the hardcore fans maybe but um, I think Subaru would rather sell more cars and make more people happy than only you know make a select group of people happy We'll take it for a bit of a drive. As I said, we'll hit the track soon, thanks to one of GP Exec's private track days, and um, see what sort of lap time it can do at Wakefield Park. But to start with, I'll just show you what it's like as, uh, in more practical terms as an everyday car. If you've got a favorite mountain drive that you like to uh, explore on the weekends, um, the new WRX STI is perhaps more suitable, or even more suitable than ever, for, for that type of thing. It's The suspension is a little bit softer than before, um, and it's just less hardcore and less uh, highly strung, but engineers have managed to make it uh, just as capable. So handling, it's it's very flat, you know, if, unless you're really pushing it, it just darts in and out of corners with no major trouble like a, like a sports sedan should. But I'm not sure if you can hear that. It's not, the engine isn't really loud. It doesn't shout out that this is a WRX STI. You know, it's one of the most iconic rally bred road cars. It's probably the pioneering road car of, uh, of the rally sort of era. Sticking with the old 2.5 litre engine um, is probably going to be seen as a good move by the enthusiasts because it's got the, uh, the old school characteristics as I said it's got the sound, it's got that throbbing sound but with that you also get turbo lag so there isn't much available below sort of 3,000 or 4,000 rpm I'll just put it into third gear and we're going at 3,000 rpm and I'll just floor it Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then it starts to come alive at about 4,000 RPM. So in that sense, it still is a highly strung car. If, you, if you're going to be driving it flat out, then you're going to be over 4,000 RPM most of the time, aren't you? So you're still going to have all the power available. But in every other condition, you've, um, you're, just, you're just pottering about and it's, it's easy to drive. But it definitely goes though, so I'll put it back to second and 4,000 RPM, floor it. There's definitely plenty of power there and plenty of torque to push you in the back. As for the four-wheel drive system, I can't find any faults with it. Um, the only fault that I do have is this little center diff control. Um, after driving it on the track, doing numerous laps, and some driving up and down this road, um, I can't feel the difference between the rear bias, or the most rear bias setting, and the, um, the sort of 50-50 setting. I can feel the difference with the center diff lock, but for the, all the other settings, I can't really feel the difference. It just pulls around corners no matter what anyway. I think it's just more about driving feel, so it might change the driving feel just a little bit. Um, but 
but yeah as I said I, I don't really have a preference it's to me it's the four-wheel drive system is bulletproof um, you can go in a tight corner and just floor it and it's uh, it, it tends to want you to apply some throttle around the corner particularly at the apex and beyond because it just will pull around and just rip you right around the corner but anyway let's uh, hit the track and see what she's like 